Yeah, all right, we got a crazy story time today. So basically this sus kid in class, you know how everyone in class get those like Chromebooks or whatever to do work on? Well, let's just say that he was looking at some extremely weird stuff on it. The teacher catches him. It's a whole spectacle. It's absolutely crazy. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a like on the video. If you're watching on Spotify, make sure you've rated the podcast five stars and followed. And with that being said, let's just jump right into this. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted this story, Alex. Anyways, there's a kid in Alex's class who we're gonna call Ben. Ben is definitely the weird brain rot gooner kid. Like, I don't know any better way to describe it. And uh, this all happened one Friday. So they're all sitting in class. They're kind of at their tables, whatever and they're always given random assigned seats for the week. So they're kind of like, instead of being rows of desks, like I know a lot of classes are rows of desks, some classes, especially like science classes, you'll have like a table with four seats at it and there'll be like four tables in the room or five tables or eight tables or something. So this class had eight tables in the room and sure enough, Alex was assigned to table eight, which is the back left table. Ben was also assigned to the back left table. So starting on Monday, the crazy thing really happens on Friday, but throughout the week, starting from day one on Monday, Alex was kind of noticing that, you know, Ben was just kind of being weird. Like he was being super shady, super sus. He would like look over his shoulder whenever like, you know, he would like go on his little Chromebook, be like, go on his Chromebook, type something up and look both ways. So it was pretty weird, but also like, Ben was a little definitely the weird brain rod gooner kid, but he also kept to himself like crazy. Like bro was not talking to a soul. He, no one really ever had an interaction with Ben, but he was just like known as the gooner brain rot kid for, uh, well, pretty good reasons. Anyways, that Friday happens. Alex wakes up. He was playing Fortnite like all night, was gaming till like 4 a.m. So he was on like two hours of sleep, feels like trash. The only thing that's keeping him through the day is man, it's Friday, man. How can you be upset? How can you really be that angry when, bro, tomorrow's Friday, we winning, life is good, man, like, it's all right. So he's on the two hours of sleep, but he's also like, you know what, I'm going to be able to play Fortnite with the boys tonight. I can make it through whatever this day is. And this was the last class of the day. So Alex is feeling pretty good. Anyways, he gets to the seat. So there's assigned tables, but there's not assigned seats. There was kind of like unassigned assigned seats, you know, when you sit in the same place in class every single day, you're kind of expecting to go back there and sit there in the same place again. But at the same time, it wasn't as much of a thing here because they only were in these tables for once a week. If you were sitting in the same seat for months in a class and then some random kid sits there, that's breaking the unofficial rules of unassigned assigned seats. However, it's not as deep with quick tables. So anyways, Alex just sits down. He gets there a little bit early. He sits down at the table because like at their table, there's some chairs that face away from the front of the room and some that face towards it. So Alex takes the one in the very, very back. So basically think of it, the only thing behind you is a wall and you face forward towards the teacher. Two other kids at his table come and they both sit on the two seats beside him. So the only seat remaining has his back to the teacher. So Ben walks in, he's slumped over, has his hoodie on, whatever. He walks to the table, then pauses. Because Ben always takes one of those three seats. Basically, well, he takes one of the two seats. He takes a seat either with the, the wall behind him or the other seat to the left of the classroom where a wall is also behind him, or the right, I don't know. And he looks, he looks up at Alex, he's like, yo, dude, can we switch seats? Alex is like, uh, why? He's like, dude, I just really want that seat. Alex doesn't really care. He's not a big fan of having his, his back against the teacher, but he also isn't going to be gooning in class. So, like, he also kind of doesn't care. So he's like, okay, dude, because it seemed like Ben was all skittish and on edge and being just kind of weird about the whole thing. So he's like, sure, dude, whatever can do. And so anyways, he switches seats. So now he has his back to the teacher. Um, so that means he can't really surf online. It's like a little annoying, but he also kind of doesn't care. Anyways, class begins. They have like a group project or something that they're working on. Um, ben is clearly not pay- paying attention. And he's also not even trying to pay attention. Like he's not even pretending like he cares at this point. And he's off in his own world, doing his own thing. 
kind of, you know, yada, yada, doing his stuff. And, you know, he starts, like, clicking and clacking on his computer, looking left, looking right. And he has this, like, weird gooner face on. And he's like, <laughs> and he looks at his computer. And anyways, things are pretty good. But that's when you hear a, oh, man. Okay, guys, I can't do a moaning noise on my YouTube video. That's going to get clipped immediately. But imagine there's a weird moaning noise, full volume coming from his computer. But he forgot to check his volume. So immediately he slams his laptop shut. But it's too late because the whole class turns around, sees it's Ben, and also the teacher sees it's Ben. And the teacher has this look on her face. Just like, I'm not going to let this slide uh, look. So the teacher starts walking over. He's like, Ben, are you doing schoolwork on that computer? He's like, yes. She's like, okay. Well, then let me see the schoolwork, which is low-key kind of crazy. I'm not going to lie. Like, the teacher's kind of wilding for this. I mean, she isn't, she isn't. If I was the teacher, I'd be like, hey, Ben, like, can I talk to you outside? I'd handle it privately. I'd be like, yeah, like, you know, it's pretty clear what you're watching on that. You got to go to the principal. I can't be doing that in school. Well, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. However, I also wouldn't be saying, let me see that. What do you mean, let me see that? You clearly know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, you clearly know what's going on here. So what do you mean, let me see that? So the whole class kind of laughing. And a couple of kids get out their phone to record it. You know, oh, we got to go viral on TikTok, man. You already know. So sure enough, he's like, uh, no, it was schoolwork. She's like, all right, let's see the schoolwork then. He's like, um... You just gotta trust me. It's like Loki schoolwork and stuff. And she's like, "Well, if it's schoolwork, then why are you, aren't you showing me?" And he's like, "Um, okay, yeah." And he like opens up his computer. I think what Ben was trying to do was he was gonna tab out of it, log into like Canvas or Google Classroom or something super quick, or like type up really quick on Google like whatever subject that they're looking at, even if they're doing like research on a specific dinosaur. Bro was probably just going to whip in dinosaur in the search engine. She would probably be like, bro, how is this helping your group? And he would just be like, haha, I'm just an idiot or something. But uh, he opens up his computer quickly. And Chromebooks, look, Chromebooks do what they got to do. They're good enough for doing schoolwork. But I'm sure if you guys have had a Chromebook or you're watching this on a Chromebook, you know that sometimes they're not the, the highest performance computer. They're not like the, you know, the $3,000 gaming computers. You, you know what I'm saying? Like they're not, they're not going to be like crazy stuff like that that's really going to be the most responsive best computer. So he opens it up and once again, the moaning noises play. Like the video auto plays. And he's frantically clicking on the computer and it's frozen. This thing is frozen, dude. Like the computer won't stop. So then he slams it shut again, but because the thing is so bricked, something else might be so bricked, but because the computer's bricked, bro, like it just keeps playing even with the thing shut. So the whole entire class is laughing, whatever. A couple of kids stand up, hands on their head, like, yo, what's going on? He's frantically opening it, trying to tap things, closing it. And that's when some kid stands behind him. And when it opens up, they're like, oh my God. It's, and they insert, like, they read out what he's, like, watching, and it's some, like, absolute brain rot sus video. Like, it's, like, Italian brain rot gets brain rot in the butt. Or so. I, I, I don't even know, Chad. I, I really don't even know what it was. Or sexy skibbity toilet ah video. I really don't know. But it wasn't, like, your standard, like, embarrassing sus video. So at this point, it's, he's cooked. Let's take a quick break to talk about SCORE, a sports computer vision project powering BitTensor Subnet 44. Here's how it works, step by step. First, annotate. Every frame of game footage gets labeled to teach an AI sports vision model what's happening. Second, pre-train. SCORE trains on that real data plus simulated plays so it learns both reality and possibilities. Third, merge. New game footage gets added into a global, ever-improving sports vision model. And fourth, build. On top of that model, people are building coaching apps, scouting tools, betting models, you name it. What makes SCORE different? It makes real-time, automated video analysis cheap and accessible, not just for pro teams with big budgets. It's already being used across 280-plus football leagues and expanding fast. And it's not just football. The same tech can analyze cricket, 
inspect factories, guide drones, or track anything that happens on camera. The team's growing too. They just bought on football. They just brought on football coach Brian McDermott from ex England cricketer Nick Crompton to help scale in sports. Score also powers DK, DKING, a project using vision data to predict betting markets. That partnership was just announced on stage at Proof of Talks in Paris, June 11th. Click the links in the description to learn more. But what happens next is absolutely crazy. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, I want you to comment down below uh, computer. That'll be the secret word of the day so I can see the names and faces of people made this far into the video. So anyways, he is trying desperately, trying desperately to like close this up. Everyone's freaking out. The teacher comes over, grabs the Chromebook, closes it. It's still playing like the video and it's like, oh yeah, you're so skibbity. Oh yeah, it's like insane, dude. So at this point, Alex completely realizes why this kid wanted him to switch because ain't no way he's going to be playing that video with the teacher looking. Uh, I mean, it looks like he did it either way. Sure enough, right, Ben was asked to, uh, ben, ben wasn't even asked to last, leave the classroom. He just started putting his, st his stuff in his book bag, puts that on his shoulder, gets up and starts walking out. At this point, the entire class is laughing, whatever. Anyways, week or next Monday, he comes into class. He doesn't even take out his Chromebook, bro. Like, he doesn't even for a second take out his Chromebook because he doesn't even, he knows his reputation's ruined. He does because the second he whips out that Chromebook, dude, he knows some kids are going to be like, oh, buddy, what are you looking at over there? What are you watching, bro? Like, oh, what are you watching over there, little guy?